Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. So you're looking at some hands of light. Did you know that you have hands of light? We all are made of basically light, just very dense forms of plasma, which is light information. Yes, exactly. And in this age, it's beautiful because we have technologies that could show the reality of these things. In years past, I don't know how many times I heard people say things like, oh, that's all just new age BS, you know, as far as ki, chi, prana, vril, the life force itself, as far as auras and chakras. Nowadays, I think probably better than half the people in the U.S., I would say in the Western world, would say that they, yeah, they believe that we have an aura, that they believe in chakras, and that they understand that we're more than just a dense physical body. You know, I think it's making it mainstream. Mm -hmm. And, you know, unfortunately, they've used this term new age, quote unquote, in a derogatory sense. And in really, it's knowledge that we've had in the past that secret societies have had and you know that in the west was persecuted mostly by the abrahamic traditions the church uh in order to just basically keep us locked into a certain lower vibrational frequency and limited mind uh framework mm -hmm. well I, I think the key word there when people say new age is the word new, you know, because none of this is new. It's far from new. It's ancient. Yeah, it's, it's exactly the opposite. And this is how they, well, they call something the opposite of what it is in a sense. And it sticks, you know, it's just, it's again, it's like we know when politicians are lying. And, you know, now especially it's gone to all new an all new degree as far as the energy is coming in uh, and basically reconnecting our ability to connect with our higher self, reworking our DNA. It's increasing our abilities. Uh, there was just one person that said, like, psychic abilities, question mark, as if you think that's real. Yeah, of course it's real. That's who we are. That's what we are. We're more than just a body. And it's it's really so sad that, that a lot of people don't understand this. They don't understand just how powerful we are, the potential we have. But science and our ability to communicate with each other is, is coming out now and showing us these things. So talking about biophotons. Gotta love biophotons. Little packets of information that we can't necessarily see, but we know that they're there because that's how information is sent back and forth. Most definitely. And, you know, things like telepathy, clairvoyance, perhaps telekinesis, and many other things are possible and have been exhibited by certain yogis. As you see the biophoton intensity at the end of that index finger, we have chakras on the ends of our fingers. And so we can concentrate and we could collect biophotons in a certain particular area. And it's, it's pretty easy to collect them with some training at the chakra points. That's why healers will use their palms or fingertips to emit the biophotons. And it's been shown that Qigong ma uh, masters can create hundreds of times more biophotons concentrate them into a particular area than somebody that's untrained. And here you see there are three specific types of biophotons shown in these photos. They have the ability to regenerate life. We talked about, well, we talked about the force, you know, and how the movies have given us so many clues as to what is really going on, what's planned, what's predicted, perhaps what's happened in the past, how we've gotten to where we are. It's kind of like a disclosure that they have to give us. They have to put it out there. It's for us to figure out this big puzzle. Mm -hmm. And I really like this picture because it makes me think about, um, it says sacred geometry photographed in human biophotons. So when we work on people and we take their energy, so their energy is very, very chaotic. There's been many, many traumas 
And what we do is we take that energy and we apply, we apply some, uh, gosh, darn it. I'm at a loss of words. Intention? In, not just intention. We definitely apply the intention, but we, we bring it into a place of where it's chaotic. The opposite of chaotic is we bring it back. Well, to, we entrain yes. uh, the, the energy of the person that we're working on to the frequency that we're holding. So that's something that yogis, Qigong masters, um, Reiki masters, you know, can do, can be yes. done. Entrainment. And, and it's just like when somebody's out at tune, so to speak, mm -hmm. and then you just tune it in, like you and would tune in a guitar or any sort of musical yeah. instrument. And we bring organization to their energy body, which really helps them immensely because all that disorganization is going to cause problems in the 3D body. So when we bring back organization to your body, you're more coherent with all of your surroundings and things just go different. Yes, and you're more in alignment with the higher self. Mm -hmm. Now, Emoto did Masaru Emoto did experiments on water showing the same sort of patterns that we see here in the light and the biophotons. Every living thing emits a constant current of biophotons. If you look closely in these particles of light, you will see various shapes of sacred geometry. We literally continuously emit tiny particles of light and sacred geometry. The best thing is we can control and direct these biophotons to go uh, to go to different places and what we do is just basically it's all controlled by pure thought It's mm -hmm. all intention The more you could focus your mind and again, I get I get taken to Basically scenes of Yoda and training Luke, you know and focus focus, you know, mm -hmm. you got to focus your mind and You know remember when Luke says I'll try he said no try do that's exactly what you need to do. You have to really know that you can. I remember when I was one of the first people I was working on, and I could just feel like this stream at first in a in a clinical setting. I was working in a in a doctor's office in a clinical setting, and the usual energy I was sending was of a certain magnitude. And it just all of a sudden was like somebody put their hands on my shoulder, shoulders, and the energy that went through got 10 times stronger. And it stayed 10 times stronger. Uh, in reality, in retrospect, I, I now think that that was, I, I feel, and, and Cindy's got a confirmation, that was actually Yeshua, mm -hmm. the being Yeshua, uh, who most people in this world know as Jesus, as I had always either thought of either Yeshua or Buddha for the most part, and sometimes I would use the archangels as kind of that focus point in my mind to envision the being sending the energy to the person that I'm working on. And so after repetition, and I had worked on you know many friends and family members before I became a professional making a living at doing it, um, you know, the energy was always at a certain level, but then when that connection happened, which was through intent, and really it's through the heart center, when we have, when we have that desire to help others, and that's the prime motivator, not basically uh, taking care of ourselves in, in any sort of greedy or self-centered manner, when you're truly, truly trying to help others, and that is your top priority the the guides not to get too off topic in these beings these wonderful beings of light again on the higher densities they could they could appear as anything they want to you know you might look at yeshua and you might see him just for instance as being uh asian you know or as being african or being pleiadian it, in reality on the higher densities, then it's really changeable. And we could assume whatever form we have to, like Cindy had shared, my mom just being on 4D, 
when she came and visited me for the first time, she was so excited. She was still in the mental construct of being in her nightgown because that's what she was in almost all the time. She never really got dressed unless she went out and she hardly ever went out at the end of her life. And then she realized, oh, wait a minute. You know, it's kind of like uh, I Dream of Jeannie, if you guys remember from that age, uh, or Bewitched. Either do a little, you know, snap of the fingers or a little wiggle of the nose, and all of a sudden you're dressed up like you're going to go out for a night on the town. Because you could. You could just change everything about you. Because, again, you know, ultimately we're all these, the, we're, we're living light, we're consciousness. Consciousness itself. Now, these bodies are very heavy and dense relative to other frequencies, other other densities. When we're in the dreamscape, if we could lose the dream, we could we could change things. You know, I'm constantly using uh, my Merkaba and flying around in the dream state, but we can also change the way we look. Like when my father comes to visit me, he died at 75. Most of the time, he looks 28 to 32. And, you know, we, we can also change our bodies the way they are now in this really dense form because they're continually moving. It's just really slow in this highly dense form. Yes. And there is such magic, quote unquote, magic's just the art and science of making reality conform to your intention. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do things like glamour and basically appear to be a little different than you are. There's all sorts of techniques. There's a golden dawn technique of the rosy cross for invisibility. Uh, are you really invisible? Well, people might not notice you. It's just the case they might walk right by, or might drive by and not, not notice you because you're putting out the intention of not being noticed. You're changing your light. Biophotons hold the keys to the quality of life in all living beings, most definitely. Our health evolves revolves totally around you know, the Wei Chi field, the, and we're going to talk about that. It's all about the life force. The life force is what animates us. When the life force is gone, the body is just, it's just dead. It's, it holds no life in it. It will de deteriorate and start to go back into smaller components, breaking down. What's beautiful now, too, is, is we have the photography, the Carolyn photography that can show people's auras. And you could see, this is not new age woo-woo, this is scientific fact. And of course, every color is a different vibrational frequency. Now, many people are developing the ability to see auras. And, you know, I've been able to see several layers in the aura with my visible eye. Now, Cindy gets more of a third eye impression. So we see things a little bit differently. I, I see more with the physical eyes, the actual energy, the life force, but I can see also with the third eye, but Cindy sees mostly with the third eye. Mm -hmm. And that goes for all kinds of different densities and different things. So you could tell people's emotions. You could tell what they're uh, giving off you know, by the colors that you see. Thus, it's, it's going to be impossible for the politicians to lie to us. It already is for them to lie to certain people. You just see it. When they get up there and they make a statement, and you could just see the energy all around them, you know, uh, yeah, you're trying to sell me something. You're not telling me the truth. It's it's just all over you. You could see the energy. More than that, you could see the colors the person's emitting. Then you know their intent. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, chakras are real, are real, and they're wheels. Yeah, they're they're actually vortices that connect us to different densities. <clears throat> and it's thought in the Vedic tradition that there's actually a deity. Uh, that resides in us, in charge of each of the chakras. And for instance, the root chakra would be Ganesha. And the root sound is gum. So even just doing uh, the mantra of gum and just holding that gum and vibrating it in. Like right now, I'll, right away, my root chakra just starts to pulse, pulsate. Just doing that just one, two times. And it's starting to pulsate and suck in these biophotons. Pull the biophotons into the body, which mm. is going to make us stronger and healthier. Yes, and, and with the root chakra, that's our survival point. That's what makes us take good care of ourselves and eat good food. It's, it's our survival. 
And I've talked about how there's different meridians. You have 12 primary meridians. And again, that's like a vascular network, an energetic vascular network, uh, so to speak, that goes throughout the body and feeds the major organs. There's eight what's called extraordinary vessels. These are kind of reservoirs, eight reservoirs, kind of secondary uh, reservoirs of a sense of life force. And then you have three Dantians. Now these are like oceans basically of the life force. The first one is the lower Dantian about two inches below the navel. Um, it's in the area of the prostate in males. And then we have one, the middle Dantian, which is between the heart and the solar plexus chakra. This is your emotional reservoir, the lower uh, Dantian is the physical chi vibrancy uh, that gives you that that good health and well-being. That's what that reservoir of, of life force is. And then the upper Dantian is right at the third eye point where the pineal is. And that's where the Shen or spirit resides. As we draw in more life force, first we fill the lower Dantian till it overflows. Then we fill the middle Dantian till it overflows. And then we fill the upper Dantian. And that, whatever we could draw up into the upper Dantian, we take with us into our next life. So whatever type of Qigong practice you do now will benefit you in lives to come. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful thing. So there's ways we can change our lives in the lives to come. And that's just fun knowing that, you know, you kind of get ready today for tomorrow. And it's the same thing with lifetimes. When you look at our society and like eating fast food, eating processed foods, eating GMO foods, everything in our society, unfortunately, has been constructed. So it seems to uh, get us taking in food that's devoid of life force. When I ate for a little bit over a year, I did about 15 months of eating just about 100 percent raw food diet. Uh, the only thing I would have that would be cooked here and there was some rice for the most part. And I felt amazing. Yes, I, I couldn't lift as much weight in the gym, but you know that didn't really matter to me at that point in my life. Uh, I didn't get tired and I didn't need much sleep. I would say I was sleeping four to six hours and feeling totally replenished and had a lot more energy. And that's because when we eat more of a raw food diet or as much raw food as possible, we're taking in life force. <clears throat> of course, again, organic, you know, that's, that is a key. And so, you know, like when we go shopping and they have blackberries for sale, two for $4, or they'll have organic one for $4.99. Uh, I'll go with the one for $4.99 mm -hmm. because I, I don't want GMOs and I don't want pesticides to go into the bloodstream. I mean, that's that's defeating the whole purpose here. So even though we're buying less, it's OK, because we're going to get more nutrition and less toxins, uh, better life force. And we need to constantly be de detoxing every day. It's just it's a must in this world right now. And you can see when you cook food like you cooked the tomato there. And, you know, we had tomato sauce last night. It was wonderful. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we do have some for sure, but try to get in as much live food. Like the, we, they had a sale on live lettuce, organic live mm -hmm. lettuce. And mm -hmm. I have to always kind of nudge Cindy to have a salad. And usually she'll just have some of mine, but with the uh, live lettuce, she'll just gobble it down like crazy. Oh, it was so good. It's like eating flower petals. It's something totally different about the live lettuce. Oh, well, it's just, it's Love. just wonderful. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's loaded with the life force. You can it, smell it. it. My cells tingle when I take in something that's good for the body. They mm -hmm. tingle. They literally vibrate. I can feel my frequency going up higher. So we see here, biophotons are weak emissions of light radiated from the cells of all living things. A photon is a single particle of light. Plants, animals, and humans generate up to 100 photons per second per 0.15 square inches of surface area. The light is too faint to be seen by the naked eye, of, I would put, of an untrained individual mm -hmm. or perhaps somebody that has gifts, you know, from previous lives would be able to see. Many people are gifted with being able to see the auras, mm -hmm. even the, some that have not done any training in this life. 
but biophotons have been detected and verified by science. According to the leading researcher of biophotons, German biophysicist Fritz Albert Pupp, light is constantly being absorbed and re-emitted by DNA molecules within each cell's nucleus. These biophotons create a dynamic, coherent web of light, a system that could be responsible for chemical reactions within the cell, cellular communication throughout the organism, and the overall regulation of the biological system, including embryonic development into a predetermined form. Yes. What, how do we know what we're going to become? as far as our body goes. Well, there's an etheric template. There's a template that is, well, on the etheric plane, it's, so to speak, non-3D physical. And that is the genetic, that's the blueprint that's formed first. And then the physical body, when the cells go through mitosis and start to divide and take their shape and form, it's following the blueprint that it's actually on an energetic level. And when this is interesting, because when I work on people um, or working on people, I they say, well, what do you want me to do specifically? I ask that you keep a very positive image of yourself in your mind's eye because our energy body is always listening for instruction. It's like, well, what do you want me to do? And it, it's going to find that instruction in your mind's eye. So it's so important to keep a positive image of yourself all the time. So this system could be responsible for chemical reactions within cells, cellular communication throughout the organism, and overall regulation of the biological system. Again, sometimes things go wrong in the physical, but if we cor correct them and bring them back to the original template, we can restore health mm -hmm. without necessarily chopping bits out or introducing uh, you know, damaging radiation or introducing damaging chemicals, different compounds that, you know, can end up damaging the organism or other systems. Everything is about coherence and it's about frequency and vibration. So this template of how you are ideally, the way you were intended to be created is still there in an energetic sense. So trained Reiki masters, Qigong practitioners, pranic healers, you know, it doesn't really matter so much the system. And this is one of the things that, um, you know, we've been talking to people when they're interested in training and all, because I truly feel the age we're going into, it's going to be a lot more eclectic. Sure, you might be trained in, in several things. You know, I, I've trained in all those. You know, uh, I'm a Reiki master teacher. I practiced Qigong for over 30 years. Uh, trained in chronic healing, uh, also studied and used quantum healing and uh, so many other techniques, polarity therapy, cranial sacral. I, I, I've studied so many different forms of healing, um, you know, as well as massage therapist and personal trainer, studied nutrition. So, I, you know, got a, I've worked on trying to get a good, well-rounded background. And understanding and it does help when you know how the body works and you do know okay well this is there and that's there why does this you know something feels wrong here um, it does help to understand all the systems but ultimately we can restore balance and harmony see that's the difference in the Eastern traditions it's all about imbalances creating dis-ease there's no quote unquote diagnosis. It's it's more about, okay, how do we bring you back into balance? And so we've talked about the more physical aspects of it, things like trying to stay alkaline, uh, looking at your blood type for diet, things like that. There's so many, you know, so many things that can help us. Obviously, you know, exercise is key as well. But understanding the dynamics of the energetic system, because when we drop this physical body, we're still there. We're still there. But yes, things that we do in this life can affect us when we're out of this life as well, especially some big things that are going on right now around the globe. 
and people are making major, major decisions that can actually affect some of the energy body. Mm -hmm. If you guys could pick up what we're saying here. So the laser-like coherence of the biophoton field is a significant attribute, making it a prime candidate for exchanging information in a highly functional, efficient, cooperative fashion, lending credence to the idea it may be of maybe the intelligence factor behind a biological process, an aspect of or cousin to consciousness. Yes, well, that's most definitely the case. You know, it's, it's, you could look at things and say, okay, well, you know, the Anunnaki biologically engineered Homo sapiens sapiens, but they didn't make us. Mm -hmm. You know, our consciousness is eternal, and our consciousness, every one of us, is an aspect, a, a, a different, you could think of it as if source is a gigantic bonfire, we're all sparks coming off of that bonfire. We're all individuated flames of light, of consciousness. So collectively, yes, we are all source. We're all a part of source. We're all part of the one. This is the greatest mystery behind all the mystery traditions. All is one, ultimately. Just like you have all these cells in your body, billions of cells in your body. Every single one is an individuated cell, but it's part of a greater whole. It's the same thing with us and same thing with, with consciousness, same thing with source, prime creator, the big God with the big G. Mm -hmm. Not the literal gods, not the ones pretending to be God, but they're not. And as I have said many times, when you look at Taoist philosophy, the Tao is eternal and really unknowable because it's just, it, it is all. Anything that can be named is not the Tao. It's not so. Anything that can be named is not source in its entirety. It's just another individuated aspect of source. Mm -hmm. So again, who creates us? Well, we create us. Ultimately, you know, we're we're guiding this whole process. The physical plane is manifesting from the higher planes, not the opposite way around. Like science will say that, well, any energy coming off of you, any light emitted, you know, when the body dies, you know, then there's no you, there's no nothing left. You know, this has been kind of, you know, the Newtonian way of looking at things in, in a sense. But it's really that you're just basically like throwing off your clothes, so to speak. You're just throwing off one garment and then... In most cases, you're going to take on a new garment. You're mm -hmm. going to put on new clothes. Mm -hmm. Very much like the Russian dolls. The innermost doll right, th that you look at is that 3D. But just like the aura, there's other ones emanating on out uh, throughout the densities. Yeah, it's all about energy changing forms. It never dies, but it does change form constantly. So I'll give you guys the link to a couple more articles talking about biophotons. This is scientific. And what's protective way, Chi? How do I build it? Well, one of the best ways is exactly what this photo is showing, and that's standing meditation, Zhang Zhuang, Qi Gong. Uh, there's other techniques too, like poor breathing. If you go to the playlist, uh, energy healing, Qi Gong, Reiki, uh, go through and take a look at some of those, those videos because we talk about this. It's Primarily through intent. And again, it's through, as Yoda said, not trying, but doing. You have to get to that point that you know that you can. And I think my original point in talking about when Yeshua came to me was something shifted in me from thinking I can and feeling, you know, this energy that felt slightly magnetic, not super strong, but tangible. And, you know, maybe half the people I was working on could feel it to electric and super powerful and knowing I could, knowing I could connect to the higher uh, densities and knowing that it could be a bridge because that's what we are. We're a bridge. We're a bridge to healing. We're a bridge to helping others connect to their higher selves, helping others regain their original blueprint that their soul wanted 
So that's what we do. Yeah, we, we are basically conduits for this life force energy. But one of the best things you can do, and one of the reasons why I kept having other healers come to me for healing, was because I had always built up my, my Wei Qi field through Qigong. So I was constantly, consciously drawing in the bio photons, drawing in the life force. So if you're around plants, for instance, and maybe you do a meditation with your back up against a beautiful old ancient tree, you could ask that tree for permission to exchange Qi with it. And it will, as just as we need oxygen and the trees are emitting oxygen, we balance each other. It's a symbiotic relationship. And so, you know, you could be there in a beautiful forest surrounded by all this vegetation and wild wildlife, your back up against the tree and consciously with each inhale, know that you're taking it in, taking in the life force. So you suck it in with each inhale, each breath. And then as you exhale, just envision yourself glowing a little bit brighter every single breath, brighter, 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 emanating more and more of this light. And just feel it expand out through you. And you might envision it if you have a lot of health problems in a <clears throat> crystalline green, a vibrant crystalline green. Or if you're trying to raise your consciousness, you could either use a violet color or a golden color and just see yourself surrounded in this energy. Uh, but there's many techniques about it. But when the Wei Qi field is strong, we won't really get sick. Uh, we'll stay healthy will stay much healthier than if it's depleted. So you want to work on that, even if it's just a minute a day, just get started on it. And even if it's only meditation, you don't have to do the standing, even though that is the best. Even if it's just a meditation and you're a mom and you're run ragged and the, the kids are pulling at you every, every, every moment of every day, lock yourself in the bathroom Give yourself, start with one minute, and it's really going to help build up that Wei Qi field. Yeah, then work up to 10 minutes a day, and then maybe 10 minutes a day, twice a day, and then just go from there. And then watch how things change in your house. Watch how they start coming into alignment. That's really interesting when you start working on yourself with intention and then see things start to fall into place. And we see this yogi survived 70 years with no food. And a lot of people will say, no way, that's just totally impossible. You know, he was monitored uh, twice as far as what I remember. And I've talked about him and I've read about him uh, many times. Uh, 82 years old. A global collective of 30 physicians spent 15 days performing a battery of tests on him, concluded that his health is above par for most healthy men his age. They watched him. He didn't eat or drink for weeks, eat or drink. Now, yeah, we, <clears throat> we could go without food for, you know, 30, 40 days without water for five or six, typically, is thought to bring on death. And, of course, without air, much, much less time. So he is basically somebody that knows how to take in the life force. And that's all he's lived off of. Do I think that's possible? Yeah, completely. Because I've read many other cases of this too. There's saints uh, from more than just the Vedic yogic tradition uh, that have done this. Many traditions. Uh, there's people that have just had a spiritual revelation of sorts and experience and they're just changed. And then they no longer have to eat. They can choose to eat, but they don't have to. No, they absolutely don't have to. So this is really curious how these things can happen. And this isn't common information. You have to go outside the box to find this information, but it's definitely out there if you look for it. And it's really interesting. Yeah, again, he was under constant sur surveillance, including closed circuit camera. And he, he didn't eat or drink, and they have no explanation for it. But then there's other, you know, cities or superpowers that have been exhibited by other monks and yogis throughout the ages, things like levitation and uh, clairvoyance and all sorts of what's supposed to be paranormal abilities, but they're actually just latent and dormant in most people. So the sky is the limit with, our, with human potential. 
And I hope that the, you guys found this interesting. So thanks for being part of the family. Make sure you are subscribed to both channels and have the bell click. Thanks for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. Thumbs up if you did find this enjoyable. I look forward to your comments. And anybody needs to make an appointment, it's evolutionaryenergyarts at gmail.com or eearts at protonmail.com. And thanks for your patience with us getting you scheduled. As always, God bless and namaste. Namaste.